Hey everyone, welcome to the latest edition of Nets Post Game Plus. Chris Sheeran and Frank Isola here in our Yes Network studios. The final score of Friday's game in Memphis: Grizzlies 115, Nets 110. A game in which Brooklyn trailed by 22. Yeah. Frank, a furious comeback in that second half, but they fall short. Yeah, and give Karis LeVert a lot of credit. What a performance by him in that third quarter. Knocked down five three-pointers, five for five on threes. Yet when the Nets took a lead, 104-102. Under five minutes to go, they outscored 9-0, and they're five possessions, 0 for 3, two turnovers. That was the game right there. Yeah, the next four minutes, the Nets did not score. So it was a fourth time during the young season that the Nets have lost the game by five points or fewer. Brooklyn capitalized when Grizzlies big man Jonas Valanciunas did not play in the second half due to health and safety protocols, but their comeback, as Frank just mentioned, fell short despite a 43-point game from Karis LeVert. Afterwards, Steve Nash spoke to the media and Karis talked about what he felt was the difference between the teams in crunch time. They executed a little better than we did. Um, I turned the ball over a couple of times. Uh, that's how it is when you're climbing back into a game, you know. You kind of use a lot of energy to climb back into it. Um, that's why we got to play better earlier in the game. But, you know, we'll learn from this. Uh, good thing about the season is we play <laughs> damn near every day. So we got another one day after tomorrow uh, to correct it. Coach, just how disappointing is it this one getting away? And it's kind of too faceted, obviously, getting down early, but to claw back and then come up a little bit short. Yeah, I mean, obviously frustrating, but considering we went down 22 or whatever it was, I believe, uh, to, to fight back and get up four, uh, you know, we it was just a couple possessions here and there where we maybe drove it into a crowd or took it into a crowd in transition instead of just taking care of the ball and getting a shot at the basket. Um, but when you, when you give yourself uh, that hole to climb out of, you know, sometimes no matter how far you climb back, you know, they, it's, it's too much to overcome by the end. I know Jared was checking into the game a little bit late in that in that uh, fourth quarter. Then there was no dead balls. Did you want to get him in a little bit sooner? And how yeah. tough was that decision with DJ? Yeah, I mean DJ was giving us good minutes. He was he was doing fine, uh, he was playing well. We wanted to get you know wanted to get Jay back into the game, and uh, unfortunately, you know at that point we were he was stuck over on the sideline for a minute or two. Uh, didn't really want to burn a timeout because DJ was doing fine. Um, so. Just one of those unlucky situations, but you know, I don't think that was the difference in the game. We turned the ball over, I think, a few times or took it into a crowd and got blocked uh, at that end when we should have been a little more patient. Nash's squad will return to action Sunday with a home game against Oklahoma City. Coverage begins at 5.30 with the Brooklyn Nets pregame show presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. For Frank Isola, I'm Chris Sheeran. Thanks for watching Nets Post Game Plus.